Hey everybody, I'm live. I apologize for the substantial delay, but among other things, I wanted to make sure I had the information before me because it is basically a situation where the athletics should have made John available to a group of us via some form of online meet meetings. Doesn't matter if it's Google Meets or Zoom, I don't care. But to give it just to the review journal in this fashion, I thought was not the best way to go. Uh, I still remain open to, well, why would I be closed? That's some bad choice of words on my part. As I said to Erica and Catherine and Dave, hey, Cal alum the Cal alum, bring him on. <laughs> Besides, the one question that they didn't ask him about, then why would they? Because they don't have Cal ties in the Review Journal, was about the whole issue of Cal and what he thought about it. So with that, I also have to admit, I am not a subscriber to the Review Journal. Uh, and I maybe primarily because I'm opposed to paywalls. I think news should be freely available and with ad revenues that reflect the value of the news. Okay. That said, what I'm doing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take bits and pieces of what was written here and then we can go from there and have a discussion. Uh, and what I mean by here is this. And as you can tell, I've sort of cyber marked all over it to make my own preparation, um, but that's done. So I'm gonna go right back here and start all over. And congratulations to Mick for getting the interview. Now, for those of you who say, hey, did the athletics pay for this with the review journal? I'm going to say candidly, it's quite possible they did because I know that this process of, of Las Vegas media, the review journal getting paid for producing items started some time ago with the Raiders when they, when the Raiders, it was said the Raiders hired Vinny Las, Vinny, um, Bonsiori, I was about to say Vinny Laspinosa who was with us, but Vinny Bonsiori, but put him over at the Review Journal so the Review Journal didn't have to worry about paying him. And I believe that kind of operation has continued to a degree here. It's quite possible that Mark Davis paid for this uh, because one bit of news that's not lost on me about this publication is that within it, it is noted that John Fisher apologized to Mark Davis for the A's behavior as expressed by Dave Cobble uh, during the whole Coliseum issue. And I think, you know, as I think about it, I didn't bother to check and see if Dave retweeted this because I'm now wondering if in all of this, maybe I hate to say or speculate if Dave is Dave's days are numbered here, but you know, this is a crazy world. All right. And you never know what's happening behind the scenes, except that I do know that, um, I do know that um, that I do know that there are people in Las Vegas not happy with Dave. Okay, so Dave's Dave didn't Dave didn't tweet out that this was out there. All right, it's not on his Twitter account, and I think that's notable. It's not on Dave Cobble's Twitter account. All right. This is not on Dave. Dave. This is not Dave's tweet. Dave's last tweet was August 22nd. That 
could mean nothing other than, you know, Dave didn't think it was necessary to do. His last tweet relative to Las Vegas was the 21st regarding Mortison and McCarthy. Okay. All right. And then now Cobble himself is trending in Twitter. And it, I think anti Fisher by design comments something must not be going well if Fisher or whoever wrote the answers is finally breaking his silence. When things go his way, it's behind closed doors. When things don't go well, he and Kyle will crawl out into the light and say whatever they need to say to get their way. Uh, I don't think that's the case. And Oakland Stadium Watch has noted, you know, confirmation that the A's have submitted their relocation application now explaining why we've seen this PR push over the last few weeks trying to salvage Fisher's image. And I don't think this is all a guess. That's all a guess. All right. What I'm going with is that for some particular reason, and I do think it was a good idea for the athletics to do this, John decided to speak. I just wish he were on this show speaking on camera rather than this. Uh, but Erica and Catherine, I believe, undoubtedly figured that they wanted to be able to control this message and not uh, be concerned with any questions that might take him in a direction that they didn't intend for him to go. So there's John Fisher, go bears and his cow cap. Uh, and it starts with this. It writes, it says, I'm, now this is very long. So I'm going to take parts of it that I believe are selling it. If there's anything else you want to note, all you have to do is put it here. Um, where showing up writes Bay Area fans and media are going to twist anything Kabul official says. That's true. And he says, I would buy Zinni a cup of tea if the A's moved to Las Vegas. Oh, how about um, steak dinner? <laughs> well, you know, better yet, all things considered with my, my current health situation, how about salmon? Yeah, salmon, broccoli, and mashed potatoes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nothing gets steak, I'm just saying, all right? Uh, TikTok, TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. Okay, bet. Oh, it's no bet. It's going to happen. I'm not betting against it. This isn't the Raiders situation all over again already. Um, so Zenny needs to move to Vegas. I am where I need to be for my mom. Thank you. Uh, it says, yes, they, everything, yes, they think everything mayor. Tao or Brody says is the truth and gospel. Talking about Bay Area fans here are going to twist anything. Yeah. Anyway, let me enlarge this, which I'm about to read so that you can read it if you choose to do so, rather than just listening to me. Zoom in. Uh, zoom in. Zoom in. And I'm going to transfer all of our Facebook groups to public. Because I believe one of the bigger pro big problems is that, let me see if I can get rid of this uh, closing, got it, is our engagement is hampered by having a more a private setting. So I'm going to take that away. Uh, now, let's get to Mitch. The Oakland Athletics have sub officially submitted their Las Vegas relocation application to Major League Baseball, and team owner John Fisher is breaking his silence on the years-long stadium saga. In an exclusive interview with the Review Journal, John Fisher breaks down what went wrong in Oakland, his excitement about future in Las Vegas, what he makes of the sell the team chance by A's fans, and whether the end of Moneyball will start with the team's Nevada move. The Review Journal's questions are in bold, with Fisher's responses in his own words following. Questions and answers have been reordered based on newsworthiness. Mitch or Review Journal. What is the timeline for a relocation vote by MLB owners? How much work remains in submitting the A's relocation application? Fisher, we just recently submitted our relocation application. The commissioner has established a relocation committee that is going to review that, and it will make, then make its way to the other committees that will be reviewing it, and then to the full group of owners to vote on it. Skipping over this. that This is not new. 
since we started looking at Las Vegas, we've been working closely with the commissioner, keep that in mind, and our fellow owners to, excuse me, make sure people were really up to speed on where things were on the timeline of our progress in Las Vegas. My hope is that this will get accomplished sometime soon, but I don't want to put a timeline on that because that timeline is really governed by the commissioner and by our fellow owners. And he goes on to write or say, but brother, this is Mitch through you, RJ. You've been known to shy away from media interviews such as this one. Why did you think it was important to sit for an interview as the A's potential Las Vegas relocation is reaching a critical stage? John says, the reason I haven't been as outwardly involved in media to date is that I really wanted the people running the team. Dave Cowell on the business side and Billy Bean and Dave Forst and the others on the baseball side to be the voice of the team. They're the ones that do most of the work here and create the teams and the product that's on on the field and that we use for creating a great experience for our fans. And he goes on to say, it was important to me that they be front and center for the A's as opposed to having it as opposed to it having as opposed to having it be me, excuse me. That obviously changes when we're dealing with a truly momentous decision around relocating the franchise from one state to another. I feel that it is important that the people hear from me because at the end of the day, that decision is mine. That decision needs to be supported by the owners themselves, but in the middle of an application for relocation is a decision I chose to make. So I think it's really important that people hear from me about why that decision was made and what that means. Now, before I continue, let me get to any reactions you have here. Um, so I respect Zinni for not twisting things, even though he's an Oakland fan. Thank you so much. Oh, RD, you're very much welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to see Las Vegas A's. Zinni is legend. Thank you. I don't feel like a legend, but thank you. The own MLB owners vote to move to Vegas will be unanimous. I agree. Um, Fisher is a savage. <laughs> I just know John is a cow bear. I will continue. Um, we go here. There has been the big push by A's fans. And I'm going to say this before I continue one thing, all right? I'm going to make this clear. John, as a golden bear, you need to be on this show. It is wrong to ignore a show owned by a media company, which is 60% owned by a Cal alum who was on the board of directors from 1998 to 2003. Yes, I'm calling it out. I'm calling the old blue, old blue card and I'm putting you down on it, all right? Get on my show, John, please. Thank you. Now we will continue. All right. Um, there has been the push. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit more. By A's fans this season urging you to sell the team. Have you ever considered selling the A's? Will successful relocating Las Vegas impact this decision at all? John says, I have not considered selling the team. I've now owned the team with my partner, Lou Wolf. It's shocking really how time flies, but since 2005, he's right about that. Our goal since then has been to find a new home and build a new home for our team. Long term, I think... We've understood, and looking at the great success stories of new ballparks throughout baseball, I think all but four ballparks in baseball are new since the early 80s, led by Baltimore's Camden Yards, going through the great facility Atlanta has built. It is, it's, clear, it's been clear to us that we need a new home, but it's taken us a long time. We're super excited about where we are today with a new stadium we're going to build, which I think is going to be iconic for the Strip. We think it's going to be great for the community, and which we think is going to be great for not only the A's and our fans, but for all of baseball and really of sports. Then Mitch comes with this question. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manford said that he believes you would feel a competitive team in Las Vegas because you won't be spending upwards of $100 million on the stadium development process in Oakland any longer. Do you agree with Manford's assessment and do you feel or see a competitive team being on the field in Southern Nevada? John says the whole reason that we're hoping or we're building a new stadium is so we can have not just a competitive team, but we hope 
a team that can have this kind of success, for example, that the Golden Knights have had winning the Stanley Cup in six years. If we can win the World Series within our first six years, that would be an incredible goal to have. That's why we're building a new stadium so that we can have a team on the field that can win the World Series. Also a team that is going to be made up of players, some of them young, having come up through our system with the Las Vegas Aviators, players that will be recognized by our fans. We've gone and watched them play when they were 18, 19, 20 years old, and up to free agents. The A's have had a more challenging time in signing free agents because we haven't had the revenue to support a payroll to do that. We expect that being in a new stadium, being in Las Vegas, is going to change all of that. Our goal is to win and win with a team of people or team people love to watch. John then gets this question from Mitch. What kind of player payroll can you sustain in Las Vegas? Does the securing of the up to 380 million public subsidy for the stadium impact what you can spend on player payroll? The building of a mostly privately financed stadium, my family will invest in excess of a billion dollars in this project and then the stadium will be the largest amount contributed by a baseball team owner of any stadium built to date. We are super excited about the public-private partnership that has been created by the funding from the state and Clark County supporting this project. The stadium will be part of the stadium authority, just like the Raiders, just like Allegiant Stadium is. The payroll itself will be funded by the operations of the team itself, which is everything from selling tickets, sponsorships, and naming rights, concessions to hats, as well as media and what is provided by Major League Baseball central funding. We expect that our revenues will be considerably higher in our new ballpark than they have been to date. Indeed, here at Zenny 62 Media, the projection is $757 million for the first year. And that will enable us to have a higher payroll and keep our young talent around, as opposed to sadly seeing them go on to other teams. And it will allow us to be out there signing free agents. With the public funding element figured out, Mitch adds with this question, are you confident that you'll be able to secure the over $1 billion in funding to get a stadium built in Las Vegas. John, I am. We have a very good financial plan in place. We've been working closely with Goldman Sachs and my family as well, as indicated, is planning to invest a substantial amount. Then Mitch comes with this question. Are the A's currently a profitable organization? To which John gives what really is a candid answer. And the answer goes like this. No, we'll lose $40 million this year, and in previous years, which included COVID when the losses were more significant, but we lost $175 million, which is one of the reasons why it is so important for us to have a new stadium. And folks, let me put this in context. When Dan Rasher and I owned, owned sports business simulations around the game that I built of the Oakland Athletics and running the business of it, I had an algorithm play put in that if you lost 120 million in any year, you are automatically contracted. That's 120 million. So if you consider what John has just report, reported, even adjusted for inflation, these are still, in terms of losses, contraction level. Uh, and But again, fortunately, over a period of two to three years, not one year. You just want to put that in there. But it's not a good scene. It's not a good place to be at all. At any rate, John goes on and he says, which is one of the reasons why it is so important for us to have a new stadium. It can help the team get to break even. But even more importantly, it can help drive the kind of, of decisions we want to make around payroll for retaining our young players and signing new players and hopefully getting back to a World Series which we did in 1989, a game that was at the Earthquake Series against the Giants when the Candlestick Park shook. Yep, sure did. Or as uh, Al Michaels would say, hey, folks, I think we're having an Earth. At any rate, I was watching that game. We want to bring the A's back to winning the World Series without the Earthquake. Now, John goes on to get this question from Mitch. The organization has been accused by fans and critics 
of deliberately tanking the past two seasons to drive down attendance and further justify relocation. How do you respond to that criticism? John says, nothing could be further from the truth. The A's this year will lose up $40 million with a $60 million payroll. And the losses that the ownership has had here with his team over the last several years have been very significant. We have done everything we can to try and build ourselves back up to being a highly competitive team again. But all teams go through a rebuilding period. If you look at Houston and Cleveland, when you look at Cleveland before they moved to Jacobs Field in, I think, 1994, they finished last, second to last, or third to last for like the previous 10 years. From 1995 through 2001, they finished first six of those years. That's just indicative of the likes of what happens. Teams who have great players lose those players. When that happens, you rebuild and you rebuild with younger players, which leads to a question I really want to ask John around something that Larry Bear told me, but I'll keep that out right now. At any rate, John continues by saying, they start out in the minors and they move up to be, you hope, great players. And they build themselves up to be great players in the future. Houston, same thing. In 2012, the A's dominated the Astros. But for the last eight plus years, the Astros have been an almost unbeatable team. It's just a process all teams go through. And small market teams like the A's often go through them more frequently because it's harder to hold on to your best players. The 2023 A's, this is Mitch for asking the question now, could rank as the worst Major League Baseball team ever in terms and a number of terms of metrics from record to run differential. How do you feel about this on-field performance? Now, John answers, we won last night, Monday night. Baseball is a marathon. You play 162 games. The other teams, baseball and hockey, play half that number of games. Football, less than 10%. It's a marathon. And each game you want to win, even if you are so far out of it, even if your record is terrible, you're getting to each game and you know that it's you against the other guy and you start out zero to zero and there's nothing that is guaranteed. John goes on to write, say this, excuse me. So we've lost a, a lot of games that we had a really good chance to win. Of course, that's super frustrating. Then we win games that we're not expected to win, and that's super gratifying. I certainly understand. And I'm not ignoring the frustration that we all feel that the fact that the A's have not performed well, as well as I hoped, and expect that they would. That's why you play the game. Sometimes it doesn't work out as you hope it will. And we made changes, and we brought in a lot of are younger players from up from the aviators. And since they brought an element of excitement into our team that I think our fans are going to grow to appreciate, I think that bodes well for us in the future. Then Mitch asks this, with the A's having one year left on their lease at the Coliseum, what do you expect attendance wise for what is likely to be the team's final season in Oakland? John says the Raiders stayed at the Oakland Coliseum after their approval to go to Las Vegas. But the question of what will happen in Oakland going forward is obviously something that the community will take up as well. We have tremendously passionate fans in Oakland. And while our attendance this year has been definitely been heavily impacted by all the relocation efforts and by the fact that the team has had an extremely difficult season in baseball, you start out in the spring and there, there is this incredible amount of hope and rebirth. And every team goes into the first game of the season following spring training, all tied for first. We're excited about our young players, all of who, who have been seen by our soon-to-be fans at the Las Vegas ballpark playing for the Aviators. That's a really exciting opportunity for us, as is for families to be able to grow, follow their favorite player when they're a minor leaguer and see them go 20 minutes away to the new stadium and play for the A's on the strip. That's a way of saying we are hopeful that our fans will want to con 
come out and support our players, our really young players, who are giving all their all to win every single game. A lot of games have not gone our way. We've lost a lot of one-run games. But we have a really exciting team. And I think next year's team is going to have a lot of excitement going on. And I would hope that our really passionate fans will want to come out and support them. Mitch asks, what is the timeline for determining where the A's will play following the 2024 Major League Baseball season? John says, or asks, excuse me, excuse me, responds, <clears throat> Our focus here has been working toward the relocation to Las Vegas and the question of what then would be the A's home going forward. Our Oakland Coliseum lease expires at the end of next season, 2024. And that's something that we in Major League Baseball and our fellow owners will work closely on determining. Then Mitch asked this question. You took in an A's game during big league weekend at Las Vegas ballpark where the aviators play this year. What are your impressions of the ballpark? Do you think it would be a suitable home for a major league baseball team on a temporary basis? Why does Mitch just come out and say, hey, are you going to play at the aviators home until your stadium is ready? This is like a passive aggressive question, but I, I digress. All right. <sighs> would you need to upgrade or expand the ballpark in any way before the team to play there? John says, I think it's a fantastic ballpark. And I don't know the answer to the question of what improvements would be need need to make that ballpark a major league baseball ready that's all going to be under discussion and under the control of major league baseball itself i can have my own opinion but the commissioner and the league will really drive the decision of where we're going to play going forward and the suitability of the las vegas ballpark for us to play there on a temporary basis now see here's where the city of oakland and celebrate oakland needs to really step up to the plate and celebrate the A's going out the door. Look, C's made a lot of mistakes. You might as well own up to them and not be a you know a jackass in the process. You know what I mean? Just saying. Okay. Now, is there an appeal to playing in Sacramento or Reno before potentially moving into a permanent stadium for Las Vegas in 2028? Great question, Mitch. Straight into the point. John Atrat responds. They're both minor league facilities that would require changes to make them major league ready. I haven't had the conversation with Major League Baseball yet as to where they would like us to play going forward. Mitch then asked this question. Are you considering a fixed dome for the new Las Vegas ballpark, or are you committed to a partially retractable roof? John responds, climate comfort is one of the top priorities of being in the stadium itself. The extent that we can make the stadium feel like it has a connection to the outside is really important. The most important thing is when people are inside the ballpark that they are comfortable. We haven't made a final decision yet. Even if it's a fixed dome, it will have a have large openings and a lot of clarity in the roof structure and walls. That it will have the feeling of being outdoors even though you have a roof over your head. Mitch asked this question. Have you been to a Raiders game at Allegiant Stadium or a Golden Knights game at T-Mobile Arena. Do you think the Las Vegas market requires a different kind of fan experience for professional sports? Is there anything you'd like to do here in Las Vegas that is completely different from what the rest of Major League Baseball currently offers? I've been to a couple of the Golden Knights games, John responds. I was fortunate enough to take one of my sons to a Stanley Cup game this past season. And I was blown away at the show that was put on with the sword fighters on the ice itself. It was an incredible experience. The support of the local fans during that game, it was one of the loudest arenas I've ever been to. That was a lot of fun. The Golden Knights crushed it during that game. So that made the crowd that more happy. I also went to a Raiders game last season against the Chargers. And it turned out to be a really great game and really fantastic experience. I really command both of those organizations for what they have created with fan experiences. One thing I will say about is Vegas different? The answer is, of course, Vegas is Vegas. They're going to call, they're, they call going up to the major leagues going to the show. And I think it's a great way to describe Vegas because Vegas is the show. We want to create an environment 
that's great for visitors and locals alike. We think that our site actually checks all of those boxes. It's going to be really easy to get to, especially with the improvements to the Tropicana Interchange at I-15. All of the parking that's going to be available. The fact that we are so central in the strip itself will also be great for visitors. It all starts with being able to create an environment that fans love to be in. It starts with having a great team, which we have, but it also is being in a great stadium and then having really good transportation options for our fans and putting on a great show. Then Mitch asked this question. The Raiders are seeing crowds with up to 50% of the fans from out of market. How important is it for you and the A's to maintain a true home field advantage in Las Vegas? John says home crowds are great. When I was at the Golden Knights game, the Stanley Cup, and the rec game I went to a couple of years ago in the playoffs, the crowd was just as raucous. It was fantastic. Having said that, hey, you play 81 games. With an expectation we're going to draw between two and two and a half million fans, and I want to be an environment that is conducive to local fans wanting to come out and support the team, having a great experience, but it's also conducive to visitors coming in. In other words, you know, basically the back confidence in that one is, look, I make money either way. <laughs> but I digress. We think that we can accomplish both successfully. We actually like to play the competition that exists between really strong local crowds and visitors who are coming, some of who are supporting the other team. We think that we can accomplish both well and not feel like we have to pick one over the other. Raiders owner Mark Davis had some unkind words for athletics management earlier this year. <laughs> that wasn't the only time. Like Mark Davis to me at the a press conference for the NFL draft in Las Vegas, in the middle of the Las Vegas strip on the strip between Las Vegas Boulevard and uh, Flamingo. When Mark Davis said something to me that caused me to put my camera off because I didn't want, you know, my YouTube video to be set into the uh, adults only area, but I digress. Yeah, it was that bad at any rate. How would you characterize the relationship between the A's and the Raiders before the NFL team left for Las Vegas? Would you want a better relationship with the Raiders if the A's moved to Las Vegas? John responds, when the Raiders were leaving Oakland, we were co-tenants at the Coliseum. And the A's probably didn't make it the easiest on owner Mark Davis and the Raiders as they left town. That's on me. That was my responsibility. I told that to Mark. And I called him when we were coming to Vegas to get to know the community. I reached out to him because I wanted to let him know that we were going to be there. And I wanted to sit down with him when he was available so that we could talk about our respective experiences and so that we can learn something from them. And we, so that we can learn something from him. Excuse me. They were in Oakland. They came to Vegas. They've been really successful, and we wanted to learn from that experience. John continues, I told him that I apologized to the extent that we made those mistakes when the Raiders were moving to Oakland. That was my fault, and I'm sorry for it. Having said all that, they've done, a, I think, a fantastic job. Allegiant is a great place to go and watch again. That team is going to get better and better and continue to build their local support. Every game is sold out. With Taylor Swift coming here and selling it out, she probably could have sold it out for 30 days straight or more. So we have a lot to learn from Mark and the Raiders, and I really look forward to building that relationship. We have a lot of friends in common, and I think he can be really helpful to us in helping us build our relationships in the community. We would love to work together on things we can do from philanthropic, and other ways to support the community itself. We feel the same way about the Golden Knights and Bill Foley. I bet Bill, at the games, communicated with him since. They've done an absolutely amazing job and are really an example of what we would like to achieve for the community, which is win, and to be seen as a really important member of the community itself. Now then Mitch asks this question. 
Oakland Mayor Shang Tao claimed that Las Vegas land agreement announcement was done in bad faith. And she has been highly critical of the organization since Governor Joe Lombardo signed the Las Vegas Stadium funding bill into law. How would you characterize the timing of the Las Vegas announcement and Mayor Tao's commitment comments about the A's? John says, in the last two years since the commissioner of baseball gave the A's permission and encouraged us to look at other markets because of the slow progress that was happening in Oakland, Oakland has known, and so has Las Vegas, that we had parallel paths. And most important thing for us was being able to get to yes. Without a new stadium, we cannot be the kind of successful team that we want to be. We made that clear in Oakland to baseball and everywhere for the last 10 to 20 years. That has been our single-minded focus since we bought the team in 2005. For the last six years, we worked with Oakland to try and come up with a plan to allow that to happen at Howard Terminal. With the last two years of that six, following the parallel paths with Oakland and Las Vegas. I met with Mayor Tao shortly after she took office, and I have nothing but positive things to say about her. But we did not have a deal in place. In fact, the Oakland City Council had approved a non-binding agreement in July of 2021 that committed that all the off-site infrastructure costs would be paid for by Oakland. The A's would pay for the on-site infrastructure costs plus the stadium itself. And I might add that the A's are supposed to be reimbursed for that part too. John continues, on the day we made our announcement that we were going to focus our efforts on Las Vegas, we still did not have an agreement consistent with what the city council had voted on two years before. Oakland did not have the money and did not raise the money to cover all of the off-site infrastructure. It was a key element of the deal that they had agreed to that they could no longer meet. We were under extreme time pressure to get to a new stadium. Our fear was prolonging things in Oakland would result in either no stadium being built or nothing happening into 2031 or beyond if things move slowly. We did not have that option. In the lax collective bargaining agreement between baseball and the players union, the agreement was that the Oakland A's had to have a binding agreement on a new stadium by January 15th of 2024, or we would lose our revenue sharing, which is something that would have had a devastating impact on the team. So we made a conclusion that we were not going to be able to reach that date in Oakland because we did not have a deal there. We had the opportunity in Las Vegas, which is a place that we're very excited to go to. And that's why we made the decision. Mitch asks, can you compare the differences in dealing with Oakland officials and Nevada officials? Great question, Mitch. Now, excuse me. John responds this way. The Oakland officials that we've worked with have been really supportive. And we really worked closely with the previous mayor, Libby Schaff for close to five plus years when Mayor Tao took over as the mayor. Libby was incredibly supportive of trying to get the project done. The same thing with Shang Tao. She was very committed to wanting to make this deal happen, as were the A's. But sometimes things just can't get done. I know people want to blame me or they want to blame the city or they want to blame baseball, but that's not really solving the problem. The reality is, I don't think it's about blaming anybody. The reality is, in Oakland, there were other significant priorities that made it very difficult for the city to be able to make the project work and happen. That is a kind of a corollary of something that Joe Lacob said once before, but I digress. John continues, in the case of Las Vegas, we have felt really supported by the community, by the building and trades unions, by Culinary Local 226 and Unite, the resorts and the resort operators, by the fans and the politicians as well. We've had a lot of support in Las Vegas and enjoyed the process of working with the community to try and get this thing or get this to happen. Now, Mitch asked this question. In the year, nearly 20 years that you've owned the A's, where would the potential relocation of the team rank in terms of importance during that time? John responds, at the top. I recognize the historic significance, the emotion, and challenges of the community that you're leaving. To have a team, 
that has been in this community for nearly 60 years, now moving to a new place. The fact that the A's are in are the third of three sports teams to leave the Coliseum and Oakland is not lost on me. I think that's one of the great challenges that we face and something that I recognize and feel very directly myself. Now, Mitch asked this question. A viable home is important for both the organization and the home city. Why is a ballpark in Las Vegas a viable home for the A's? John Fisher answers with this. From the moment that Dave Cobble and I went to Las Vegas at the approval or invitation of the commissioner, Rob Manfred, starting about two years ago, keep that in mind, folks, it, because it dovetails with something I had told you all back then. This was 2021. At any rate, it became really clear that not only is Las Vegas an incredibly great and passionate sports town, but it was also a baseball town. The A's AAA affiliate is the Aviators, so we spent a lot of time going out to Las Vegas ballpark and watching games out there. It is just a tremendous experience. Don Logan and the folks from the Howard Hughes Corporation have done a fantastic job in building a great home for the Aviators. Being out there showed me how much passion there is for the game from families, local families. I think the other thing is seeing the success of the Raiders and the Golden Knights has shown that not only are tourists and visitors interested in going to sports games, but the local market is incredibly strong in Las Vegas. That goes all the way from the governor, Joe Lombardo, and the legislative leaders who we were, who when we were in Carson City, a number of them had pictures of the favorite baseball team, or signed baseballs ranging from support for the Seattle Mariners to the Yankees, to the Detroit Tigers, was really exciting. I've been really impressed by the strength of the market and seeing how the Golden Knights and Raiders before us have really led the way in what a great market for sports Las Vegas is. Then Mitch asked this question. Has anything that you've learned about Las Vegas during the over two-year relocation process surprised you? John says, asked this, says this in response. In the past, the, as vis a visitor in Las Vegas, I spent my time mostly on the Strip. I have some good friends who live in Las Vegas, and they told me it was a really great place to live, very family-oriented, but I really didn't know what that meant. As I spent the last couple of years, nearly every month, I'm spending time all over the area, and I've really come to appreciate the local community. The business community and labor have been such supportive forces for making Las Vegas the great place that it is today. I didn't really appreciate or know about that until I spent some more time in town. Now, Mitch asks this question. How would the A's benefit Southern Nevada if the team relocates to the area? Now, John responds in this way. The stadium we're working on designing as we speak and having a great contractor with Morton and McCarthy, I think it's going to help us create a home team for a a home for a team that's going to be second to none, and it will be a great attraction. It will be somewhere where families from Henderson or Sumlin or from the north or the south will want to come to. But the reason that we have been so focused on getting a new stadium built for the last 20 years, while our teams have been exceptional on the field, we have done it with generally low payrolls compared, compared to the average or higher payrolls in Major League Baseball. That's not the path we want to follow moving forward. We want to be able to be in an environment where we can create revenues that can support much higher payrolls for the team and be a team that can compete for the World Series, hopefully every year. I got into this sport because I want to win. And building a new ballpark and doing it in Vegas and having it be tremendously successful is going to help us achieve that goal for ourselves and for especially the fans all over and for the team and the people who work for us. Now, Mitch asked this question. Will you make Las Vegas your primary residence if the A's relocation is successful? John responds, I am so focused on finding one home, which is a home for our team, that I will say that I looked at different places in the community. I think it's a great place to live, and my plan is to spend a lot of time out there. I think a key to our success, just as the success of the Golden Knights and the Raiders 
and some of the other successful things in Vegas is to really connect with the community and really be seen as part of the community. That's something that is really important to me and my family is to really feel connected to the community and build friendships there. But also to do things to support the community. The A's have really been a big supporter of our community in Oakland and the East Bay, supporting Little League, teams, hospitals, literacy programs, and our expectation in Las Vegas is to be very supportive and do what we can so people understand that the team is part of the community and does what it can to make the place a better place for people to live for everyone. But he didn't answer that question. You know, John was doing right up until this point. <laughs> he should have just said no. <laughs> All right, continuing with this one. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, what is your background in baseball? This is from Mitch, of course. Did you play the sport when you were young? Little league, high school, what positions did you play? What made you love the sport? John responds, I started going to baseball games before I could even remember because my grandparents were huge San Francisco Giants fans and started going to Giants games when they moved out to San Francisco in 1958. And... Then went to basically every single game for 30 plus years until my grandfather died, rest in peace. They would take my brothers and me to the games, but I have to admit, I probably liked the cotton candy and red vine licorice more than the necessarily liking the games. My grandfather, who took us all to these games, was himself a bat boy when he was seven years old, and he was photographed with a group of American professional baseball players that I was told were the first group to go out and play exhibition games over in Japan. In fact, my grandfather's uncle, this would be my great grandfather's brother, was a guy named Mike Fisher, who's also the name of my son, who owned the minor league team in Tacoma in the Pacific Coast League. So there's a lot of history in my family dating back to the early 1900s and being involved with baseball. I myself played mostly racket sports in school, I did play baseball when I was in elementary school enough to know it probably wasn't going to be my career, at least not playing the game. <laughs> John says, uh, or rather Mitch asked this question, what got you interested in pursuing ownership of pro sports franchises? What do you see as the pluses and minuses of doing so? Excuse me. Um, sorry, folks. All right. Okay. John answers this. One of the things that I love about sports is it brings people together. It brings people together of all nationalities, of all different socioeconomic backgrounds, of all different ages, and to have the opportunity to run a team or own a team is really sort of a gift. When I go to the games and I see families enjoying themselves and coming out to the game, it gives me a lot of internal satisfaction and pleasure to see it happening. I grew up in the environment where ABC Wild World of Sports had this opening to each one of their sporting events where they would call it the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, as Jim McKay would say, <clears throat> added by me, not anybody else. One of the things that you learn at a very young age when you're following a team is the agony of defeat. Your team is always going to lose, and it is incredibly agonizing. But when they win, it is incredible, positive rush of excitement. Being able to have those sorts of emotional extremes is definitely something that drives you to the game, and the game in sports in general is a great way to bring people together. Mitch asked this question. What is the most important thing you've learned in business? How do you apply that to the A's? To want a successful business, John Alfers, first off, you have to have great people working for you. We worked extremely hard to bring the best and brightest people, both in the business side, led, led by Dave Cobble, but also on the baseball side by Billy Bean and Dave Forst. The organization there is critical to your success. You're not going to be successful in business if you don't have great people. The second thing is you need great product. While our team has definitely struggled this year, for the most part, the Oakland A's have been a great product. With tremendous players, great play on the field, and creating experience for fans, which I think has been really positive, our teams have been, over the last 20 years, some of the most successful teams in baseball. We've made it to the playoffs at least six times. And just like you learn in business, if you can have great people working for you and have a great product, you'll be successful. I think that's been the same experience with baseball. And there's the whole deal right there. So uh, 
I gave you the whole nine yards, the whole enchilada. Whew. What did you think, folks? Uh, let me go back and uh, get your comments here. And thank you for listening. And by the way, folks, please uh, share this. If you know somebody who's blind and obviously then can't read, you know, what the Review Journal put out, share this with them. Um, it's a lot more personal and a lot better than anything else you're going to get in terms of a recording. Um, and it's probably over the other ones, other source that has it. So anyway, you know, share this with them. So anyway, uh, here we go. I'm going to go through these and uh, pick up where we left off, which is he's a quiet owner. Not every owner is a Steinbrenner or Mark Cuban. Flapjack says the schools over stadiums thing are probably irrelevant by the time this will be done. Show enough says schools over stadiums are already irrelevant. Sell the team, 13X says. Ha, 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 Fisher is savage. Um, somebody showing up says, uh, revenues equals signing players. Ticket sales equals revenues. If fans don't show, then there's no bucks. Playoff six times in previous 10 seasons. Can't more get more than 21,000 fans per year. No, I think he meant 2.1 million. Uh, at any rate, um, Kate Moo says, I'm finally glad to have said something. 13 says, my birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday. My birthday wish is to hear the A's are definitely moving to Las Vegas. Kate Moo writes, I'm glad he finally started talking about it. Show enough offers. He doesn't need to justify relocation. The attendance was already bad, even in winning, winning seasons. People watch Major League and think that's how it works. Showing up says, look at the Angels. They've been in the playoffs once in the last 10 years, and they are about to lose Otani. So Vino Olar says, do you really think Fisher's going to spend big in free agents over, especially Otani? You must be new to the game. We can pray. Laugh out loud. Showing up adds, no, it won't be Otani, but I can see Bryce Harper finishing his career in Vegas, though. Showing up gives the fire to that. So Vina Lara says, washed up veterans, that's the only free agents they'll sign. Shona says, passionate about the wrong things. 13X says, Las Vegas says merchandise anywhere. K. Moose says, I believe he will spin once he gets to stadium. Sarah says, yeah, if it's a new owner. Hopper says, Oakland fans will leave the Coliseum the moment the MLB approves the move. Laugh. Show enough adds. They spent in 2018. Payroll was at over 100 million. We went to postseason, but they still couldn't even get to average attendance. They will spend, invest if there is a return. Um, excuse me for one moment, please. Let me continue. Um, spending doesn't equal winning, though. Looking at you, Yankees, Mets, and Padres. The A's will share the Raiders stadium. Ha ha, just kidding. Uh, 2028 Las Vegas. Jose Luis says, Oakland expansion team win. Great question. Sure enough, adds, okay. The Vegas Golden Knights pregame is basically medieval times without the included dinner. Include the dinner. Uh, Shonef says up to 50%, which means it can't be lower than that. Shonef adds, you can survive a car ride up to 100% of the time. So it says, it's really happening. Las Vegas Hayes get hyped. Shonef adds, I can't take anyone seriously with a haircut Mark Davis has. Shonef adds, he reminds me of the spoiled kid that stole Pee Wee's bike. You know, I gotta say something here about these criticisms about Mark, okay? Uh, look. Um, way back as I was coming up, first as a teenager at Skyline High School, and then through the years, through the 90s, going to King's X Bar, um, 
and meeting people who, as it happened, they knew Mark. Um, I'll just say that Mark didn't have the greatest childhood in Oakland and um, probably got into things that he regretted. And I'm not saying he did anything super bad, but um, I think those are years that he would probably like to have back. But, you know, good fortune, he, he righted himself. And he put himself in a position to take over the Raiders, you know, in honor of his father. You have to applaud him for that. I, I can't, I can't think of that mark that way. I re I refuse, uh, because people in Oakland, the way that we are, are like family, and that's how I regard Mark and everybody else. Um, all the people with the Raiders who are still with the team, and you know, who left the team are people that I've gotten to know some people very well, some parenthetically up to enough to recognize them. Uh, so I, I can't go there with you, you know, as much as has Mark been mean to me for reasons that, you know, aren't, aren't necessarily good. Yeah. Was I mean to him, him because I thought he was turning his back on Libya and treating us inappropriately. Yeah. Were either of us right? No, you know, but do I like Mark as a person? Yeah. Boom. Okay. So, you know, there it is. I mean, there's a lot more that I could say that I don't want to just clog up, but I'll say for another time. But Oakland is a Oakland is a big city that's really a small town. All right. A lot of people know each other. If you don't know somebody, somebody else knows somebody that you know that knows somebody else. And even if you think, hey, that's the person not in my age group, chances are they went to the same high school you did, even if they were younger or older. All right. Oakland is a small town. Oakland has a small town behavior for better or worse. Oakland wants to be a big city. We've had a lot of battles about that. And right now the small, the smallest beautiful people are winning and I hate it. Um, that counts to me in July, 2021, when I knew 100% was when the days we leaving. Mm, for me, it was October, 2021. Showed up says May Tao was the one who actually cut off negotiations. She made that decision, not the A's, then after that says, we will not quit. Okay, sure. That's, she did cut it off. That's true. Uh, Vegas, the city that can. Hope is the, <laughs> Oakland, the city that can. That didn't take long. Um, showing up says, the reality is that the city was not in a strong negotiating position and knew it. Uh, showing up says, it brings people together to wear silly cell shirts and chant blank Fisher. Jose Luis says, show enough, it's not silly t-shirts it's helping the team uh t quim says uh fisher is doing some local pr for some reason it's a bit late he says oakland expansion team win show enough says uh twenty one thousand per game sorry um then he t put says oh, ace fans are completely delusional if they think major league baseball is going to turn down public money yeah <laughs> um dominic Dump Damien says, when we get real stadium renderings, that will make all of this real. Let's go A's. The young guys we got now will be pretty good in a few years. Stadium renderings, please, in time. You'll love them. Trust me. Um, t -Put says, Baltimore has one of the lowest payrolls this year and is in first place. San Diego is one of the highest and sucks this year. Jose Luis says, is there going to be a new sports team in Oakland? Uh 2025 Las Vegas, 2028 New Ballpark. Uh, yep. I wish the A's could share allegiance until a stadium is built. That's not possible. They can't play baseball there. Uh, Damien says, I still think the A's and aviators should just simply swap cities. Tim says, right now the city has far, far more work than on the A's stadium. No, we can do the A stadium. Believe me, that'll get everything else out of the way. Indirect thinking will solve the problem. The trouble is that direct thinking has never helped Oakland. All right. Anyway, he says that's the thing they could they couldn't say in this article. Eh. Uh, I don't think they can play Allegiant. They can't. And finally, is any Las Vegas A's is happy for sure, so I can start to wear my A's caps. There you go. All right, folks. There it goes. I've got to go down for dinner. Um, if you want a second follow up show for this. Send me notes in the comment section. Please share this. Thank you all very much.
uh, for being here, for doing this. I can't uh, say and thank you enough for joining me for this. Share it around. Um, make let's make absolutely certain other people you know see this right, and um, and make absolutely certain that they uh, are able to um, you know, for want of a better term, excuse me. Uh, what am I trying to say? You know, for want of a better term, share the uh, share the info. You know, as it were, share the info. Okay. Um, but yeah, definitely share it around. And I'm glad everybody is here. I'm absolutely glad that everybody is here for this. Uh, and then replay it again and again and again for your folks to hear it who are not, uh, we're not able to do so. And, um, and also, for those people who are blind, remember, keep that in mind. There are people out there who are, are sports fans who maybe they just are not where they can see or very well to read anything. Or uh, if this is, is better volume than the other thing, play it for them and uh, say, yeah, you know, Zinni, Zinni did this for you. All right. Um, and then I hope to get John on myself for an interview because I have questions on myself on my own here that I would love to get answers to. Um, and uh, I, uh, including about Cal. No, that never came up. See, this is another reason that uh, another reason that John Fisher needs to come on my show. In fact, how about John and Dave, right? How about John and Dave, you know? Get them both on. That would be the great hat trick. I think I'm going to reach out for that. I'm swinging for the fences, folks. The best is right here, okay? And the best is yet to come. That's how I look at it. To, to quote the old Sinatra song, the best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fun? Uh, I love that song. Boy, I love that song. The best is yet to come. And... um Come the day you mind. Go to the alley, folks. Thirty-three twenty-five Grand Avenue, uh, and I want you to enjoy the alley. Thirty-three twenty-five Grand Avenue. On, on behalf of myself and hey, Oakland A's fans. Thirty-three twenty-five Grand Avenue. Go and sing on behalf of Rod Dibble, the late great piano player there in Oakland. So if you visit Oakland, remember this, the alley, 3325 Grand Avenue, folks, okay? That's vitally important, all right? All right, so I will be back. Um, he says, uh, my, what, what's for dinner? I don't know. I can't wait. Uh, nothing but love for you, show enough. Thank you, man. Nothing but love, show Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.